a soldier and a good one. While the war raged, he fought very bravely. However, when the war was over and there was peace once again, good soldiers like Johann were no longer needed. And so he was discharged. Well, hmm. I really don't know what I can do now. I haven't a bite to eat. The only clothes I have are my uniform. I've nothing. I'd do just about anything to be back home once again. Johann learned you must be careful what you ask for. Who? Who the devil are you? You flatter me. I'm merely a demon. Uh, uh, I know how to use this. <laughs> a gun. <laughs> that silly toy is no good against me. Well, what do you want? No, what do you want? That is none of your business. You would just use the knowledge against me. Of course, that's what I do, and I am very good at it. But I am also fair. I will make you a true bargain, unless you are frightened. I am not afraid of man or beast. <laughs> Tell him, Johan. <laughs> That's right. So do I get a reward? Patience. I fear you will have to earn that reward by changing your lifestyle. Somehow I thought there'd be something more. Of course, my friend. There's always a price to be paid. Well, maybe I think your price is too high, whoever you are. Maybe I don't want to bargain with you. Maybe I'll just keep on walking down that long road back to my home. But wouldn't you like some gold in your pocket when you get there? Mm. Think about it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Well, first, you mustn't bathe for what? seven years. Well, I've been dirty and it didn't kill me. You also cannot cut your hair or trim your whiskers or even shorten your fingernails. Do you understand? That's all? Not quite. You also can't pray. I won't even be able to say my prayers? Now that could be a problem. You give up? I didn't say that. I think the Lord would forgive me if I didn't pray for a little while. Uh... <laughs> I tell you what, I'll even give you something to wear. Clothing and an overcoat, but you have to wear them all of the time. Sure, I can do that. And if you should have the poor taste to die while wearing them, why then I shall take possession of your soul. Ah, now we see what you get out of the deal. But I did say I was fair. If you should somehow manage to keep yourself alive, why then you'll be a very rich man. Guess I'll just have to make sure I don't die, that's all. <laughs> Watch. You will never lack for money. If you need some, all you have to do is put your hand in your pocket and it will be there. That's good, I admit. And there is your overcoat. What? That bearskin? Yes. From now on, you'll be that filthy man in the bearskin. You can never, ever take it off. If you do, I win. <laughs> little fella. Help! The bear's got hold of me now! Believe me, I'm not going to hurt you, little boy. I only want to help. I'm just a man, really. I'll just help you up, all right? Hmm? Look at that. That's quite a scrape. Looks like we'd better get you home. Where do you live? There. Here we go. Huh? So, 
you're not afraid of me anymore, are you? Ooh. Ooh. Gracious. Huh? Hello, anyone home? Uh, who is it? <clears throat> Mama! <laughs> oh. I apologize if I've startled you. I just wanted to make sure your boy got home all right. He fell down and scraped his leg while he was playing, so I thought I should bring him home. Poor baby. It's nothing very serious, just a few scratches. What? I can clean it up for you. Oh, I... Unfortunately, I had to do a lot of this in the war. I thank you for your kindness. This is nothing. Forgive me, but you seem quite ill yourself. Well, you see, I'm a widow. It's all I can do to care for my son. <coughs> you need a doctor. Excuse me. You can't afford to be ill. I can't afford the doctor. <coughs> I'm hungry. Can we have some lunch? Oh, son, I'm sorry we don't have any more food, but the neighbors said if they have some leftovers, they'll share with you. All right, Mama, I'll ask them. No. Here, take this. Huh? set out again on his long journey home. Thanks. Thank you very much, Mr. Bearskin. Bye. <laughs> Bye. His footsteps were lighter for a while. And all he asked you to do is pray for him? He said there was a very good reason why he couldn't pray for himself. Well, whatever he's done, our dear Lord will be looking out for him now. And I will pray for him every day for the rest of my life. Who would have thought it to look at him? From now on, I think I'm going to be looking at much more than just the surface of things. Mm -hmm. Don't judge by looks. I still can't believe it. Although Johann bought happiness with the demon's money in that small village, his wanderings brought him nothing but misery. For the next four years, he was shunned and despised. Decent people wanted nothing to do with the filthy tramp in the bearskin. We have no room for the likes of you. Now get out of here. There are lots of other inns available. Why don't you try one of those? I've tried all of them. You're my last hope. I'll sleep in your stable, whatever you have. You're a tramp, and I cannot afford to lodge charity cases. How much do you charge, then? I can afford it. What? Think you can find room for me? Um, where, uh... Never mind. Come right in. From now on, you'll be that filthy man in the bear skin. You can never, ever take it off. If you do, I win. <laughs> I don't think I can live like this anymore. I don't think I can do it. Children run away from me. I disgust anyone who comes near me. I disgust myself. I'm not even fit to sleep with the animals anymore. Maybe I should just die and get it over with. <laughs> <laughs> I can't take it anymore. I'd be better off dead. That way at least my family can collect on my insurance. No, don't do it, man! I'll admit, when I saw you, I was really scared. <laughs> I understand, but believe me, there's a good reason I look the way I do. Really? What on earth could it be? Let's not waste any time on me. Tell me why a man like you wants to kill himself. Hmm. Sometimes just talking about your problems allows you to see them in a different light so you can solve them. Different light? Not this time. All I see ahead for me is destruction and darkness. Burdens are smaller if you share them. Why should you care about my pains? I do. All right, you asked. I am Hans Mueller, a merchant. I've been working hard to expand my company into new markets abroad. I borrowed money from all over Europe and gambled every bit of it on one shipload of spices from the West Indies. The hurricane that sank that ship also sank me. I can't pay back any of my creditors. I can't even afford to pay for this room. And the only real problem you have is that you need money. And that's a small problem. I'm losing my business and my home, my family. How will I care for my children? <laughs> you needn't worry anymore. I don't have enough strength left to worry. 
There's no way out. It's hopeless. I don't know what to do. <laughs> My darlings. Oh. <laughs> oh. We're so glad you're home now. Was it a good trip? Mm -hmm. I can see nothing ahead for the business but success from this time on. Christina. Welcome home, Father. Are you safe? Mm -hmm. And I won't need to travel ever again. Oh? I have something very important to tell all of you. Come over here with me at once. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> well, my darling daughters, as of yesterday, the business of Mueller Mercantile is no longer mine. Oh, huh? <laughs> I mean, I now have a partner who has given me a tremendous amount of money. Mm -hmm. When did he ask to join you? I asked him, as well as offering him the hand of one of you. Is he handsome as well as rich? Well, his looks are a little out of the ordinary. Father, where is this new partner? Will he be here soon? We want to meet him. Mm-hmm. Well? Mm-hmm. <coughs> Johan, would you come in here, please? Mm. <gasps> Good heavens! Oh, uh... Daughters, this is Johan, my partner. Oh, oh. Eldest daughter, Gisela. Oh, my youngest, father. Tetra. Oh. And my middle child, wearing the pink, is Christina. He's gruesome. Mm. Uh, I oh. am not in the least amused. Oh, oh, wait for me, Gisela, wait! Tetra! Oh, you're disgusting, Father, talking about marriage oh. with a vile creature like that. Yeah. He looks like an animal. He even smells oh. like an animal. Father, if you think I'll stay here to be insulted, you better think again. Hmm. Why, of all the... Johan, I'm sorry. Christina, dear daughter, I can't begin to tell you how important... It's it... all right. His appearance is very odd, Father, but he's helped you so much. And... In his eyes, I see such a kind and gentle soul. I believe I would be honored to become his wife. You would? When Johann heard Christina's words, his heart warmed. For the first time in four years, he felt hope and love. But for three more years, he still had to do the bidding of the demon who'd given him the bear skin. Christina, I want to give you something. Here. I want you to take this and keep it safe until I return. I will. Um, I will. Christina. I have to go away from you now and I can't tell you the reason, but I'll be gone for three years. You must trust me. If after three years I have not returned to you, you'll know that I have died. You must then pick up and go on with your life. And the sad part will be that you never really knew me. And I do so want you to know me, Christina. Oh, Johan, I'll wait three years or three hundred. Yeah. Oh, no! <laughs> oh, hold on there. But I... Uh, I just want to... Oh, please. no, you don't. <laughs> And so Johann continued along his cold and weary way. Nowhere was there a kind greeting for him. Nowhere a friendly face. And always his thoughts turned to Christina. The good-hearted young woman worked and waited. And her thoughts also were of the one she loved. Darling. Although seated in pleasant, warm surroundings, wearing the half-ring Johann had given her, Christina had her trials as well. 
Well, little sister, how are you bearing up, huh? Huh? I was just thinking, if you want him to come back, why don't you put on a sweet expression? Bears like sweet things. When he gets back, be careful no one calls you honey. He just might mistake you for his breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder what kind of wedding it'll be. Oh, I'm sure it'll be very lovely. They'll hold it out in the forest and invite all their animal friends. And instead of a wedding cake, they'll serve bears. But you hear me? Stop it. <laughs> We shouldn't tease her. After all this time, Johan's probably not even alive. If he hasn't frozen to death, he's probably been hanged as a thief. <laughs> For all her comforts, Christina was heartbroken with worry. It was now a year since Johan had left Christina with a promise to return. Two more years to go without the solace of a friend or ally. <laughs> the unchanging truth about time is that it passes. Johan's seven years in the bearskin had come to an end. It's over at last! <laughs> now and I've come back. You can have the bear skin. Where are you? Uh. You demon, come out. I did everything I was supposed to. Hey, demon, where are you? I've come to give this bear skin back to you. There you are. Go ahead, Johan. You can take off the bear skin now. I will. Here. Here you are. Thank you very much. <clears throat> now then, what about my riches? You promised me you'd make me a wealthy man if I survived the seven years. That's right. Well, where's my reward? Just reach into your pocket. Pull out the gold as much as you want. <clears throat> oh, I'm my own bank. Hmm. And so a visitor came to see the merchant and his daughters. A handsome young man of obvious wealth and stature. The townspeople were greatly impressed by his youthful poise. He must be a nobleman, they thought, for he carries himself as if he has never been soiled in his life. Gisella, look! Sir, my master seeks a wife and understands that you have several daughters of marriageable oh. age. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. There is a young man of quality visiting us. Obviously a noble. The object of his visit is to take a wife. My prince at last. Don't waste your breath. Obviously mm. I'm the one you want. Don't be silly. Oh, shut up, Gisela. Dear daughters, the young man will make up his own mind. Culture and breeding certainly leave their mark. You could look a bit happier, Christina. Leave me out of it, please, Bob. Hmm? She still thinks that filthy creature in the bearskin will be back. He's dead, you know it. He's not coming back. Mm, Christina, Johan saved my life, it's true. But even I have to believe he's no. gone. No. Oh, Christina, we have to accept the fact that he's not going to return. Oh. <laughs> <clears throat> I trust I'm not interrupting. No. Would you care to meet the three most lovely young ladies in town? Mm -hmm. First, my eldest, Gisela. My youngest, Tetra, and my middle daughter, Christina. Christina, is it? That is a very lovely name. Gisela has a nice ring to it, don't oh. you think? I think Tetra's a pretty name. Yes, they're both pretty. However, this Christina... Hmm. Hmm. Your daughters, sir, all very lovely, but I want Christina. Uh -huh. Uh, I am sorry, but as it happens, Christina's engaged. I don't think that's a problem. We can find a way around that, can't we, Christina? No, I am not available. I'm engaged to a fine man, and I've made a promise that I would wait for him, and I will wait for him no matter how long it takes. He's lucky. Didn't he give you some sort of engagement token? Yes, a sort of ring. But why do you want to know, sir? 
Yeah. Because oh. I have this. A sort of ring that looks a lot like the one you wear around your neck. I have... Oh. Oh. It's true, Christina. Is it you? It was a long, dark time. But nothing will take me from you again. Oh, Johan! Johan? I have come back to you, Christina. Yes, I knew you would, darling. That's the man in the bearskin? It isn't true, is it? Oh. Petra! Oh. Gisella! <laughs> my blessings on the two of you, my children. And of course, they both lived very happily ever after. Except for the demon. But that's another story. Thank you.